Hi guys, it's Hayden. I'm a junior at the University of Michigan and today I'm going to be sharing with you 50 pros and cons of being a University of Michigan student. So I'm going to start off with the pros because I'd like to start off on a good note and then I'll move to the cons. So I have 25 pros and 25 cons and yeah, let's get started. So the first pro is that it is one of the top public schools in the country pretty much no matter where you look it's either ranked between first through third which is awesome the second pro is that it also has a top alumni network i believe it's like the second or third top alumni network there are 500,000 living alumni third pro is that i feel like michigan attracts the same kind of students people that really care and want to do well in school but also have a lot of school spirit the fourth thing is that there are people from all over i've met people from all over the world literally it's amazing to just hear about different people's experiences growing up and also feeling not alone as an out-of-state student also this perspective will be from an out-of-state student perspective so it might be different for someone who's in state and out of state. The fifth pro is that there are great sports teams. They're very history teams as well. Literally Michigan football, I mean, like two weeks ago won the national championship and there are so many other amazing teams and the sports here are just really good the sixth pro is that there are lots of clubs and ways to get involved on campus i feel like that kind of speaks for itself the seventh thing is that there are so many resources for about anything you can get grants for starting a business or you can reach out to the, like the alumni network to help you get a job and there's all these online platforms that Michigan provides for students and literally there's like no extent to where the resources end. The eighth pro is that the campus is gorgeous. I literally walk through this campus all the time and just like think to myself how gorgeous it is, especially when it's freshly snowed, it's really pretty. And when the leaves are falling in the fall, oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. The ninth thing is, is that it's a walkable campus and a walkable town. Pretty much I can walk most places that I need to within 30 minutes, which I know some people are like, oh, 30 minutes, but some people live closer, some people live farther. I'm 30 minutes away from like the stadium, if I'm walking from campus, I'm literally like a five, six minute walk. So it just kind of depends on where you are, but I love that everything is walkable, especially as an out of state student, I don't have a car here. And so it's nice to be able to get groceries and pick up random supplies places without having to drive anywhere. Tenth pro is that there's so many things to do in Ann Arbor. You can go to an arcade. You can go get drinks in downtown. There's bowling. There's art museums and literally everything under the sun is walkable distance in Ann Arbor. And it's awesome. The next pro is that there are so many amazing restaurants in Ann Arbor. Literally, I've barely touched the surface in terms of like going to all the good restaurants. I have a tendency to try one and really like it and continue continuously going back to it. However, there are literally so many good restaurants. Like there's literally so many to try from. And the nice thing is, is that they're all pretty locally owned. So it's not like they're chains that you can just go and try anywhere. The 12th thing is, is that it's pretty easy to get to the airport. Whether you want to take like a 20 to 30 minute Uber, which is about like 50 to $60, so you might want to split it. Or there is like a bus in downtown Ann Arbor that's like 10 to $12 that takes you to the airport. And it's just really close by. So you could also like have a friend if they have a car, like drop you off. It's really not as much of a hassle as I know other areas are. The 13th pro is that there are over 8,000 students in a grade. So you're more than bound to meet someone that you like or resonate with. And I think that's a beautiful aspect of the school is how big it is. The 14th pro is that you get free transportation as a student. So you get access to all of the like city buses. I've never actually used them, but I know that that's the case. And I'm pretty sure you just have to use your student ID card, but I could be wrong about that. You might want to look into that. And then the other thing is, is that they do have like a nighttime service that you can get safe rides home if for whatever reason you don't have access to like the bus, for example. 15th pro is that there are constantly free goodies. Literally every week in the alumni center, they have bagel Wednesdays and sometimes they've even like given out donuts, they give you coffee. One week I went and they gave us like wellness packs and there's just constantly free stuff being given out everywhere. I've gotten free t-shirts and coupons for free burritos and I don't know, literally so many things. So it's kind of fun to get a bunch of free goodies. The 16th pro is that everyone that goes here has a pretty strong sense of pride in their school and that continues on outside of school the whole go blue thing outside of campus is amazing being able to just see someone in michigan stuff and saying that and them saying it back 
almost just creates this like network outside of school and everyone is really proud to be a Michigan Wolverine. The 17th pro as an out-of-state student is I finally have been able to experience the seasons. It's pretty fun. However, people in-state might feel a little differently since they're kind of used to boring old winters. The 18th pro is that there are so many cultures here. I've literally learned so much about other regions and even like different religions. The 19th pro is the work hard, play hard mindset. So students here have worked really hard and they still have fun. And that's pretty much what that means. The 20th pro is that you can make the school feel a lot smaller by getting involved. I'm involved in Michigan Greek life and I'm involved in a professional fraternity and you'd be surprised how small the school feels once you start getting involved or even if you're not involved and you're just a regular student i swear i run into the same like 50 kids in all my classes sometimes the 21st pro is that frats do allow non-sorority women to go to their frat parties i know that's not the case for all big schools but it is kind of nice because you can't rush until the winter time at least that's how it is as of january 2024 22nd pro is that there are a lot of uh, fun traditions. There's things like walking through the fountain and then you walk the opposite way when you graduate and supposedly if you kiss someone at midnight in the engineering arc you guys are bound to like get married or something or just like have everlasting love. There's lots of tradition even just football games and all that kind of stuff. The 23rd pro is that there are a lot of fun cities nearby that you can visit. I have been driven to Toronto, which was like a four hour drive. I know that there's some cities in Canada that are even closer. I've been to Detroit. I've gone to Chicago, which is like a three hour drive. I've been to Indianapolis, which is about four hours from Ann Arbor. And there's so many other like fun little small cities in Michigan. And it's really fun to explore a new area as an out-of-state student. The 24th pro is that it's pretty easy to get student tickets for football as long as you get it like right when it comes out. I know that some schools it's very competitive and at Michigan it can be. However, I do know that for the most part, people that get it that first day, they have enough tickets. And the 25th pro is Michigan's meal plan. Their meal plan is literally amazing in comparison to other people's meal plans that I've heard about. You get seven swipes a day to just go to any of the like dining halls and you don't have to pay extra for the dining halls and they have different food every single day and you literally get seven swipes. So that's three meals and then four times that you can go and get snacks if you're hungry or go get hot cocoa or whatnot. I was a big fan of spending time in the cafeteria or dining hall when I was a freshman and I love going back. <laughs> Okay, so now let's talk about the cons, the not so fun part, but they do exist and I'd be lying if I was like, oh, Michigan's the best school in the world. I mean, I think that, but that doesn't mean that they don't have cons. The first con is that there are some pretty bad dorms. I lived in the second worst dorm in the whole school and I think what really is bothersome about that is that you're paying the same amount as students who literally are getting huge rooms, air conditioning, and they lived on central campus. I lived on North Campus, which if you don't know the difference between like Central Campus and North Campus, it is like a 10 to 15 minute bus ride to North Campus. And then it's also like one of the worst dorms, um, Bursley specifically, Bates is even worse. Even though I loved my time at Bursley, I wouldn't change it for the world. It was super social and it felt like it's a little community out there. However, I don't think it's fair that we're paying the same amount because I had no air conditioning. My room was teeny. Literally the first night I was there, there was a bat in my hallway. Like I wish I was kidding. Yeah, it's just not known as being a good dorm. The second con is that you will feel dumb. Kids at this school are really smart and you're gonna feel dumb at one point in your college career. And then kind of going off of that, the third con is the imposter syndrome that you'll feel. Regardless of that's academic, imposter syndrome or if that's professional imposter syndrome at some point you're gonna kind of be like am I supposed to be here did they like let me in incorrectly like I can't fit up to the caliber of the school and I promise you most people feel that way you just need to push through it and I believe that everyone that's at this school was meant to be here so you're not an imposter I promise the fourth con too is the level of privilege here is insane I mean, I grew up in California, which I know is more affluent than a lot of other areas. However, I have not been surrounded by people that have so much privilege and don't 
realize the amount of privilege they have. And I know I'm very privileged to be going to this school too. I'm just saying that it's literally astonishing sometimes. Fifth con is the Ross curve. And basically what the Ross curve is, if you take any of the Ross like business school classes, you are being pitted basically against the other students in your class. And what I mean by that is that in these classes, only the top 40% can get an A and the rest of the class gets B's. It doesn't matter if you do amazing on every single assignment, if you get an A on every single assignment, but if every student in your class is getting A's in, on these assignments and they're still doing a little bit better than you, you could still end up with a B. And that is so aggravating because you could literally work all semester and do really well. However, if you're not doing as well as the rest of the students in your class, you could get a worse grade because it's a curve based off of the students that are in your class. However, I will acknowledge that sometimes this is helpful for the classes that are pretty academically hard. The sixth con is that housing in Ann Arbor sucks. Literally, it's expensive and competitive and you have to basically figure out your housing a whole year early. So like I got the house that I'm currently living in now in like October or November of last year so all like last school year I mean I understand that most colleges this is like a thing but I swear every year the rent is like going up astronomically everywhere and it's just kind of annoying because these houses aren't even that nice the other con is that Michigan as a whole is a very competitive atmosphere even if people aren't trying to make it competitive you hear that this person is doing x y and z but you're only doing z and then you feel like you need to be doing x and y I feel like that's pretty common at pretty big top public universities. The eighth con is that it's very overwhelming at first. There is so much to learn. Literally there's such a huge campus that it takes a while to figure out what the buildings are and where you're going for classes. Eventually you do figure it all out, but it can definitely seem daunting and overwhelming at first. The ninth con is North Campus as a whole. It's just kind of annoying that they have classes up there, that they have dorms up there, and they make students bus up there with literally no tuition difference. The 10th con is that it's pretty hard to get into clubs here. They're very competitive and sometimes certain clubs are literally harder to get into than getting into the school was. And you're also competing against everyone that was able to get into the school. So it's definitely hard. The 11th con too is that STEM here is extremely hard. I have taken STEM classes, but I'm not a STEM major. That class was so hard. It was literally like astronomy 102. So like an introductory to astronomy course. It literally was like astrophysics. I went to office hours every single week because I didn't understand anything. And I just sympathize for my friends that are STEM majors because it sounds so stressful. The 12th con is the wind chill. Literally, it'll be like 20 degrees out, but it'll feel like negative five because of the wind. That is just not fun to deal with, especially certain areas get wind tunnels. So you're just blasted with freezing cold air and then your hair like just goes and it's just, it's not really fun to deal with. The 13th con is that Greek life here can be like a popularity contest. And as someone in Greek life, I don't care as much anymore. Like I'm a junior, I'm kind of, I don't live in the house anymore i'm very far removed i still go to events i'm still in it but it doesn't really matter anymore but when you're like a freshman and a sophomore i swear it is like the, the topic of conversation way more than it should be there's like all these rankings of like which one's the best and which one's the worst and i don't know i just i feel like people join them to get involved the rankings really shouldn't matter however unfortunately they do at least how it stands now the 14th con is that there is constant construction going on they're tearing down buildings to build high rises or they're fixing the roads and like i don't know why i can just always hear construction going on i know that's a good thing because that usually means that they're like working to build something better however it can be really annoying when it wakes you up at 6 a.m on a saturday the 15th con is that it is one of the most expensive public schools in the country as an out-of-state student. I don't know if that holds true for in-state. I'm pretty sure it's ranked in the top. It might even be the top most expensive public school in the country. The 16th con is because of how big this school is, you can get pretty lost in the crowd, so you have to be able to hold yourself accountable. There's gonna be no professors that see that you're failing and check in on you. They expect you to hold some kind of level of responsibility for yourself, so you kind of have to know that you're willing to do that. 17th con is the nepotism here is insane and um, I don't really think I have to explain that. 18th con is that it's not a great bar scene. There are only like two really popular like big bars that are like dancing bars and then there's 
a few bars that are more like sit down and hang out with your friend bars. But when I went and visited my friends at other colleges, their bars are like popping. They're so popular. You can go to X, Y, and Z bar and it doesn't really matter. You change it up every night. I go to the same bar every weekend. The 19th con is that disease spreads rapidly here. There are big class sizes and I feel like that accounts for some of it. But literally, I remember this so queer as day my freshman year, the flu was spreading so rapidly here that scientists were sent to this campus because it had exponential numbers of infection that was not happening at any other college campus at the time and just goes to show that disease spreads rapidly here. By disease, I mean illnesses too, like um, that's what I'm talking about. The 20th con is that GSIs can make or break your grade. If you don't know what a GSI is, they're graduate student instructors and usually they're the ones that lead your discussion classes and or grade all of your assignments. And I know for a fact that there have been classes that I would have done better in if I had had a different GSI or I would have done worse in if I had a different GSI. It's kind of annoying because it's the luck of the draw. You don't get to choose your GSI. Kind of going off of that, another con is, is that some of the professors here are just not that good. There are plenty of amazing ones. However, I would recommend looking at like rate your professor before deciding on a class because some of them don't have the best reviews. The 22nd con is that some people here are snakes. I mean, this is gonna happen at every like school really, but it's crazy some of the things that I've heard that people have done, it's just wild. Another con is the class sizes here are pretty massive, especially when you're an underclassman and just taking the general education classes. Those classes are huge. One of my like biggest classes had like 200 to 250 students in it, which is just a lot of students. And yes, the discussion sections were a lot smaller, but lectures can be kind of boring when you're just being taught to with 250 students. The 24th con is the language requirements. So if you don't test out of the language requirements in like LSA, for example, you have to take 16 credits of language and what that is is that's four semesters. The reason why this is bothersome to me is because my minor that I'm doing is 15 credits and so for the language requirements I'd have to take 16 credits and it doesn't even count for like a language minor like i luckily only had to take three classes they were still hard and like for what then last but not least the 25th con is not getting the entire week off for thanksgiving they give you wednesday thursday and friday and typically every other year there's a home game for the ohio state michigan game and that's a very popular game to go to. So I remember my freshman year, I didn't go home because I wanted to go to the Ohio State Michigan game. And I'm glad I did because it was like the first time they had won in a long time. However, I didn't know that people would just skip their class on Monday and Tuesday or that professors would cancel class on Friday, two days before Monday and Tuesday. And so I literally had no classes, but I was stuck there because I wasn't gonna spend $600 on a flight. And since then, I have skipped the Monday and Tuesday for Thanksgiving week. However, it's really frustrating as an out-of-state student because you don't know if the professor is going to cancel it or if they're going to mark you down and hurt your grade because you're not there. If class ends up getting canceled on Monday and Tuesday, then you're just kind of stuck there and you could have had an extra four days. And it's really annoying and they should really just cancel that Monday and Tuesday, in my personal opinion. I know why they do it because they give us a break a dip, like a few weeks before that takes off Monday and Tuesday, but literally most colleges get the whole week of Thanksgiving off. So yeah, that was my 25 pros and 25 cons, so 50 pro and cons altogether of the University of Michigan. And if you have any questions at all or any comments or concerns about anything that I said, feel free to comment them down below. I definitely can like answer any questions regarding anything that I said. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe down below. I hope you have an amazing day and I love each and every one of you. Mwah.